Hello everyone, and welcome to the second part of this three-part video for Network Services 2. Today we're going to be going over understanding SMTP, enumerating SMTP, and exploiting SMTP. So to start off, we're going to come down here to task 6, start up this machine. If you haven't already terminated the machine from enumerating NFS, go ahead and do that, and then start up this new machine. And then let's jump into understanding. As usual, we've got a good breakdown of it, how it works, what it does. And let's see what the first question is. What does SMTP stand for? Right up here, SMTP stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. What does SMTP handle the sending of? If you didn't already guess it, emails. What is the first step in the SMTP process? I believe it's right down here for number one. It initiates the SMTP handshake. That's the first step. What is the default SMTP port? It should be 25, I believe it's listed up here. Hmm. Where did it go? There it is. This connection works over the SMTP port, which is usually 25. And where does the SMTP server send the email if the recipient server is not available? Recipient server can't be accessed or is not available, the email gets put into the SMTP queue. On what server does the email ultimately end up on? They get sent to the POP slash IMAP server. They're either going to be on a POP server or an IMAP. Can a Linux machine run an SMTP server and can a Windows machine run an SMTP server? Right up here, SMTP server, readily available on Windows, other variants on Linux. So that is a yes for both. All right, that's understanding. On to enumeration. Let's get started, give it some time to boot. If you haven't already, start that machine on up. We're gonna be using SMTP version as part of Metasploit. Got some other things. Good idea to run an update before getting into Metasploit. Make sure you've got all of the current stuff. All right, so let's run a port scan. So for me, as usual, I have mine saved, but it would be an nmap minus a minus p minus, and then the address of your machine here. For me, it's this one. For yours, you can punch in what yours says. And then, oh, so for mine, I'm going to have to change into that folder. Right here, cat. There we are. So it looks like we've got two ports open and not a ton else going on. SMTP is running on the usual standard port 25. Now we're going to start up Metasploit. The command for Metasploit is this MSF for Metasploit Framework Console, which opens up the console for it. Now we're going to search for the module SMTP version. So search SMTP underscore version. And its full name is Auxiliary Scanner SMTP slash SMTP version. So we're going to copy that on over. There we go. Now we're going to select this module and list the options. So we're going to use, and since we did this search first, instead of any of these things, we can just type in the number here on this list. So we can do use zero, and you can see it put us right into the module we needed. And to list the options, the answer is right there in the question. You just type in options. 
All right, have a look through the options. What is the option we need to set? As you can see, we have three settings that are required, and only two of them have a current thing set. So our hosts is what we're going to need to set. Let's set that to the correct, correct value, run the exploit. What is the system mail name? All right, so we're going to do set our hosts and then to the target host, as it says right here. So the machine's IP address. And now, if you're feeling froggy, you can do exploit, or if you prefer run, both will launch the module. And this was a pretty quick one. It found it right here. You can see the name is polosmtp.home. There we go. All right. The MT, uh, what MTA is running the SMTP server? This will require some additional research. So we want to know more about what this is here. We've got this ESMTV postfix. Let's see what that is. Postfix. What is SMTP postfix? Postfix is the default mail transfer agent, MTA, in Ubuntu. So you can see we've got an SMPT version, SMTP version, Postfix, and then Ubuntu. So I think it's safe to say that Postfix here is the answer to our question. And there we go. All right, so now we've got a good amount of information. We're going to search for SMTP and num. So just like before, um, I generally like to back out of modules. I honestly don't know if I can do search from there, but maybe. Feel free to experiment. Type back, gets you back to the standard console, search, and then we're looking for SMTP and num. And then just like before, it only found one, and it's module zero. So we can do use zero. What is the full module name? Again, just like before, we can copy and paste. Oh, just a word on copy and pasting. If you're using one of the web-based either attack box or Kali boxes, if you haven't figured it out yet, there's usually a little bar right here. You can click on it, it'll expand out, and you can open up a clipboard. So you can copy and paste from your web-based virtual machine to your local browser. It's a little bit finicky, but it's an easier way than not copy and pasting at all. Just a tip for you. All right, so we're going to be using the top username shortlist from the username section of seclists. So if we've got this installed, this actually isn't where it's going to be. It's actually user share and then seclists username. And seclists here is all lowercase. So if you do already have it installed, great. If not, as they say here for Kali and Parrot, you can do sudo apt install seclists. When you do go to download it, it is about, I think, 380 something megabytes. So it can take a little bit of time, but you can go ahead and do that just from a normal terminal. You'll want to get out of uh, Metasploit, or you can just open up a whole second terminal and run through it there. And that'll get you this username list that we're going to be using. So for me, I have already gone through and downloaded it. I've got it set up and we're good to go here. So we need to set an option for the word list path. We need to know which option that is. So let's take a look at options. Looks like the user path or the file path would be under user underscore file as the one we need to change. What is the other essential parameter? And again, just like before, you can see what's missing for the required options, our hosts. Now, I suppose while we're here, I should probably set it up to use the appropriate uh, <laughs> user file as well. All right, so let's set our host first, because that's the easier one. 
All right, 10, 10, 134, 165, perfect. Oh, right, I should give it the variable before I hit enter. So it's going to be slash user slash uh, share slash setlist slash username and then slash uh, paying attention here at least for mine when it installed only the u in usernames was capitalized so it is top dash usernames dash shortlist dot text all right let's take a look make sure I've got things correct IP address is good user share basically frame look hmm nope apparently I got something wrong well let's take a look so we can open this up CD into ERT and say user share so user share sec lists and then in here we've got usernames and then in here we've got top usernames dash shortlist.txt alright so let's see what I did wrong Oh, not full screen, please. Just off to the side. So we've got user share sec. Oh, there it is. Sec list instead of sec lists. So we're going to do set user file to slash user share sec lists username names. Nope, oh, and then slash top usernames shortlist. All right, user share sec lists usernames top usernames dash shortlist. Let's see if that one was actually correct now. There we go. So now we've got the correct name of or the correct name, the correct list of usernames. We can get out of this one. Now we're going to go searching for a username. So for that, we're just going to run. And it'll query the server, run through its list. It could take a moment, but this one's usually pretty quick. Well, relatively quick. There we go. So we finished our scan, and the username found was administrator. So we can type that one in as it's the answer to this last question. Nope, oh, didn't click complete on that one. Got the green bar, so that one's all good. On to our last section, exploiting SMTP. So for this, we're going to be running through Hydra again and then logging in with SSH once we have the password. You should still have Hydra from the last room, and it looks like we're going to be using the rocku.txt file as well. All right, so now that we've got the username, let's Hydra up our password. So we're going to exit out of Metasploit, Hydra-T, now, for here, he recommends using, or I guess I shouldn't assume, they recommend using 16 uh, parallel connections. For mine, I seem to be having a pretty slow connection through this VM to the TryHackMe servers, so mine works a little bit better with 8. If you see that you're getting a bunch of socket errors, you've got a little too many parallel threads for what your connection can handle. If you're working on the web-based uh, machines, you'll probably be a lot better off. I know I have found that the web-based Kali machine specifically is much faster than 
any of the other ones, either working locally or the attack box. But that is just my personal experience. All right, so Hydra dash T, I'm going to go with 8, minus L, Administrator, minus P, to give it the file. My rock you is in share, word lists. I also discovered recently that if you have Kali, you probably already had rockyou.txt in this location. It will still be uh, gzipped, so you'll have to unzip it, but you probably already had it before, and I was just a goofus. All right, so let's see what we can see. This one again, since my connection is kind of slow, you'll see it going through eight at a time. If this takes a little too long, I'll probably cut this section down, but we'll see how long it goes. This is actually working pretty well. <laughs> and I shouldn't have said anything. Look at it stop. If you see this status pop up, don't be worried about it. It's just letting you know how many tries it's done out of how long it's been running. It also gives you how many tries it has and how long it'll take. Oh, there we go. Looks like attempt number 145 was the winner with Alejandro. So now we know our username and our password. Let's SSH on in there and see what we can see. So SSH, we know the username and password. We're not using a SSH key this time. Yep, I will spell that correctly. And then, so username at, and then the IP address of the machine. And then it's going to ask you if you want to trust it. If it's your first time connecting, you type in yes. Then the password, Alejandro. And there we go. We are now logged in as the administrator of Polo SMTP. Let's see what we got here. All right, I should type in this password here for answering that question. And now we're SSHing in. What is the contents of smtp.txt? Let's cat that out to the screen. THM, who knew email servers were cool? Copy that on over. And we have just completed the SMTP section of Network Services 2 on TriHackMe. Thank you very much for following along. I'll see you guys in the next one for my sequel.